today uh, I would like to give you another explanation because the last video we had we were able to actually explain or I was unable to explain deeply what this particular write-up is all about. This is straightforward. As you can see it's written in English language. What I want to tell us is that this is very important. The way your preparation for the exam is important. This is as important as your preparation. Because the knowledge you have here will guide you in what to read and how to read. And that is why the, uh, the exam body has, uh, has put together this learner's guide. And it is not all learners that have access to it. That's why I brought it up so that we can have a, a view or a review of what it's all about. Learners, this learner guide explains what you need to know about your Cambridge education English English in this course. And what is that thing? You are, it will help you to understand the skills you have by taking this course, how you be accessed, what examiners are looking for in the answers you write, how you can revise effectively using a revision our revision kit. Uh, in this particular write up, this particular page, uh, I will only be talking about the first two bullets the skills you should develop by taking this exam and how you will be assessed. How you will be assessed. And what, is this? what are the skills? Number one, you are expected to develop your ability to communicate clearly, accurately and effectively when speaking and writing. Speaking is there because there's another that is basically listening and speaking, but as far as we are concerned in Mavis, we will not be writing that speaking exam. We will be writing, we will be doing that reading and writing. So you are expected to develop your ability, and the way to do it is by reading and by writing. I will encourage you, you read and you write. This is an international exam. I will encourage you, you go to BBC, uh, read news, journals, articles on their, on their page. See how they think, how they write, what they write, and everything. That is the only way. Because it's an international exam, you cannot use the articles in, in, our, in, in our environment to know the mind of the writer. Because the extract they will be given to you will be foreign extract. Talking about autumn, talking about uh, spring, talking about uh, where their weather conditions, not Amatan and the uh, wet or cold season. They will not be talking, they'll be talking about winter, they're talking about the mountain, they're talking about snow. So if you don't have uh, uh, a pure understanding of what these things are, it's very difficult. And you learn when you read. Another thing is that you learn how to use a wide range of vocabulary. Like I said, I will upload uh, IGCSC, you know, uh, uh, prescribed vocabulary that you need to master before uh, you go into the exam. You can't exhaust everything, but uh, it's better you have some before you go into the exam so that you know how to use them and uh, how to put your, your sentences in correct grammar. And you need to work on your spelling and your punctuation. You need to work on that also. Another thing you're expected to develop is your personal style of writing and style of writing. So you, 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 there's nobody that brought a particular style from heaven. The, the individual, after reading various styles, they pick one, they imbibe one. So you cannot have a personal style if you are not a good reader. And like I said, you go to BBC, you read. When you read, you see the way this person I say, okay, I think I can imbibe this. I think I can use this particular style. You need to have a style of what? Of writing. You can think of your Cambridge Dean uh, course as having three main areas of speech and understanding. We will not be talking about the third area because it doesn't affect us. So we will only major on the two areas, reading and writing. You need to work on how to read and how to write. As a matter of fact, if you want to excel in this IGCSE, you need to learn how to read. Because your writing will be determined 
by your reading. So that is why this reading comes first before writing. Because if you, reading, you will not write outside what has been given to you. They will give you an extract, they will give you a passage. It is from that passage you are going to write. So if you are able to read, if you have your reading skills, uh, you know, shepherd, if you have uh, a good reading skill, then it's very easy for you to understand what you have read and you'll be able to put it down correctly. That is not to say that you don't need to work on your writing also. Even though if you are good, a good reader, you have to work on your writing. And what I, we expected, what is expected of us under reading, you must be able to demonstrate understanding of explicit. Explicit means outside. You know, outside the box. You must be able to demonstrate implicit meaning and attitude. That is within the passage. So, from read from the passage, you should be able to gain ideas, meaning outside the passage. You should be able to analyze, evaluate, develop facts, ideas, opinions, using appropriate support from the text. I want to tell you, break down what it means to analyze. When the when IGC asks you to analyze, what are they expecting from you? When they ask you to so what are they expecting from you? When they ask you to discuss, when they ask you to explain, what are they expecting from you? I will also upload that in the Google class. The first leading skill you are expected to have is to demonstrate understanding of how writers achieve effect and influence leaders. They will make use of words. How have they used these words? It could be a common day-to-day -day word or it might not be. How they have used this word to create effect. Image. How they have used the word to create image in the mind of the reader. And how they have used it to influence the, the, the reader. And also to select and use information for specific purpose. Of course, IGCSE, like I used to say, that is very, very, very simple. They will tell you where to go, what to do, what to, what, uh, what to write on. So ability to go to the passage, bring out that specific information, use it for the specific question that you have been asked. You need to also develop that while reading. Another thing is writing. We have five here. You should be able to articulate experience and express what is thought, felt, and imagined. Now, once I reading, you should be able to express your feelings. You should be able to articulate your experience. You should be able to articulate what is thought in the passage what the characters in the are feeling and what they imagine. Or probably your imagination, your thoughts, and your feelings. Depends on the way the question is being constructed. You're able to organize and structure ideas. Once you are able to gather the ideas, then you should be able to structure them. You should be able to arrange them according to the hierarchy that they is expected. Hmm? And these are expected to be done deliberately to create effect hmm? from the simple to the to the to the difficult from the to the unknown you need to learn how to arrange when you arrive use a range of vocabulary and sentence structure appropriate for the context so you learn you 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 you, you mix up your sentence structure you use simple sentence complex sentence compound sentence use you know, you mix them together in order to indicate. Now, you also need to use a range of vocabulary. Like I said, I will include that. Use register appropriate to content. When you are asked to write for a speech, for a school, what the content, the, 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 the register, the words, the, the diction of what you are going to write will be different for when you are writing to another, maybe, if you are expected to write a speech, it will be different from when you are expected to write a speech for, you know, uh, a community use. So, the passage given to you will have told you, or will make you, or will have probably informed you what the, the context of your writing will be. So, you use that context to choose your register. And then, inside the appropriate O. 
make accurate use of spelling, punctuation, and grammar. No matter how well written your essay might be, if it's you know, if if it is passed with wrong spelling, wrong punctuation, and your grammar, and wrong grammar, then it's as if you have not done anything. Now let's go to how you be assessed. Don't forget, like we have known or probably told you, that you have two papers. As of 2019, we have three papers, paper one, paper two, paper three. Here, we have two papers. For Nebes Academy, we will write the two, we write the two papers. So the paper one and paper two. What is paper one? Paper one is the reading passages and it's composed for all everybody. It is just a two hour, a two hour examination which we attract 80 marks. Inside this paper, reading and the writing. The reading will take 65, the writing will take 15. And you'll be asked three questions. And this particular question, this particular paper is covering a low mark for that, for English language, 50%. And under paper two also, we have directed writing and composition. It's an alternative for, for component three. So you see that you write paper three, Two, or you write paper two that is paper three that is component. But we will not be writing component as far as paper is concerned. So we are we are only writing paper paper two. So let's break down what we have in this paper one. Paper one we have reading two hours examination. You will answer three compulsory questions on three texts. Text A, B, and C. The text will be printed on the question paper in search and may be on a similar topic. So, starting for this question one. The said question one is based on text A and text B. The length of the text A and text B combined together will be 700 to 750 words. So, this text, this question one, we have a, one A, one B, one C, one D, one E, one F. That means those are the categories that uh, they will divide the question into. So we have one A, one B, one C, one D, one one F. Yes, I'm correct. So this from one A to one F with the 30 marks. And they are simple, simple questions. You will respond to a series of sub questions. These sub questions test your understanding of both explicit and explicit meaning and your ability to select or use information from the text. Like we said, talk about implicit and explicit. Now we have, you should spend about 15 minutes reading the text, leaving appropriately 30 to 35 minutes to respond to each question. So 15 marks are available for reading. Then we move to the summary. Summary. This question one is also part of summary. The summary is also part of question uh, one. Yes, it's also part of question one. That is question, this summary task, which is based on text B. Don't forget the first question says uh, question one to E is based on A and B, text A and B, but this particular one is based on text B. You answer a selected summary task using your own words. Your was written as continuous writing, and this is 10 marks. This is, this summary is 10, 10 marks. Uh, this summary is uh, 50 marks, rather. So 10 marks for available, was available for reading, 5 marks for writing. Now, we move to question two. Question two is 25 marks. Question three is based on text C. This question is divided into two separate parts. We have the short answer questions and we have the language task. Under the short answer question, like we have here, you respond to a series of sub questions also. This question two, you have a series of some questions, one one answer questions, you know, a word given to you, and you'll be asked to use another word to replace it as it has been used in the passage, or probably they will give you a synonymous word to a word that has been used in the passage and they will ask you to look for that word in the passage. By the time we move to, to answering questions, you have a better understanding of it. 
of this particular question. And this question two, we have question two A, two B, two C, and uh, two two D. Two D. And under that one, we have uh, we have uh, we have uh, ten marks. It's available for reading. And uh, we have under the language task, you will write two to three hundred words in response focused on certain paragraph in text C. So it is not going to be all the paragraphs. The paragraph that is question 2D now, they will select a particular paragraph and questions will be asked on that paragraph. They will select another paragraph and questions will be asked on that paragraph. And under this language test, this is where you'll be asked to extract three powerful images. Is that they are words or they are, uh, uh, they are phrases? That has shown effect. So they will ask you to give the meaning and the effect created. And the last but not the least is question three. This one is based on the on the on the text C. So it's like an uh, a directed writing also. It's more or less like a directed writing. So you could either be a letter, a speech, a journal, an interview. Uh, an article depends, and that's why you have to learn everything so that whenever you come across any of those, you be able to answer. And this particular takes 500 to 600 ways, and uh, you have to answer. So we have it in letter, in report, in journal, speech, interview, or ask. That 15 marks is available for reading, and uh, 10 marks for writing. Okay, now below, we also have the components. You know, it is self explanatory what you can uh, you can read and understand. What skill will be assessed? You will assess your reading skills, like we have said before. Then you show that the cognize things, suggest suggestions in the text, evaluate, show that you understand, select and use. You also assess your writing. These are the two major skills. And that's those are the two we are going to be majoring on for the next few days or months or weeks that we have to the actual exam. Okay. So I think that is uh, that is that is all for now. That is all for now. And I want to encourage you that uh, you pray for your parents so that they have money, they can go to have money for them so that they can uh, get data for you. And you also pay for us as teachers. You also need the uh, uh, data also, that the Lord will also provide data for us so that uh, we too can, uh, can, uh, can uh, have money to buy data. Thank you for, for for joining, for tuning in, and I want to believe that all this exercise by the special grace of God it will bring forth good, good, uh, bring forth good results in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. See you another time. one.